One of Kirby's coolest features is how easy it is to add a new field to an existing page type, like this project's page here, for example. So we've already created a couple of fields here, but only some simple ones. So a text area, some inline text, and a URL field down here. And let's just pretend this project has been going for a couple of months, and now the client calls us and they want a new field to enter the year when the project has happened. So in this case, we go to our project, and we go to the site folder, to Blueprints, Pages, and we open the project.yaml. So this is where we set up the page type and how the panel looks for this page type. And you can see this is where the fields are. So we created those fields down here. And now all we have to do is to decide where we want to place it. So we want to place it below the text area. And then we choose a name for the field. I take year because that kind of makes sense. And then in case we could go for another text field that would totally work. Um, but I'm going to choose a number field in this case makes a bit more sense. It depends totally on what um, you expect to be entered here. So maybe the, the, the client wants to put in date ranges or year ranges. So in that case, a, a text, text field might make, make, make more sense in your, in your project. So now we have the year field created and we can go back to the panel, open that back up. And you can see now the new field is there where it should be. And we can start entering a year here. So this is all that it takes basically. So you could, could go and create many new years, uh, new fields here now, and you can check out if it has been stored by going to your content folder to projects, to the first project and to the project txt, and we can see, okay, the year field is, is here as well. Cool. So let's open that up. Uh, that project page in, in the browser. And you can see the year doesn't appear here, of course, because we haven't integrated it yet into our template. So that's going to be the next step after we set it up in the panel. And to do that, we close the content folder again, go to site templates, to the project.php. And you can already see the definition list here that shows the other information about the project. So we have the client data here, category and link. And you can see we created those if clauses there, if you haven't watched that video about it. Um, and I'm just going to explain them quickly. So we are accessing the, the field page client here, and then we check if it's empty or not. So we check if it's not empty in this case, and we only show this part of the HTML if it's not empty. And that is quite important because we want to make sure that the label up here only appears together with the value if the value is actually there. So if there is no client information available, then it, it's better to not show that. It looks less broken in the end. And we do this for all the fields that we have, and this is kind of the cleanest way to go forward. So we can, can, uh, we can just copy that and do the same thing for the year. So we take the year here, we call it year as a label, and we call it year here as well. So now we have integrated our year field and let's just check out how it looks like in the browser. So yeah, it shows up correctly as ex uh, expected and it's showing up in a, in a very secure way or it's in integrated in a very secure way. And we can check this out on another project. So if we go to the second one, that has no year yet, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, it doesn't have any text either, but in this case, you can really see it's it's totally fine because the year label is also gone because of our if clause, and this this is exactly what we wanted. Cool. So this is this is what we needed to integrate a new field. So about like two minutes of, of work in the end. But what I also want to show you in this video is what you can do in order to optimize this form a bit more. So the more fields you add, the more it takes. Yeah, it gets necessary to optimize this a bit more and make it more pleasur pleasurable for your um, clients to edit and work with it. So in this case, it gets a bit long. So especially if the text gets longer and we add more fields down here, it's just that one long list with fields. And um, most of the fields don't really need that much space here. So let's see how we can improve that. So what I want to do is I want to place those fields here, those four fields in a grid. And that's actually super easy to do. So let's go back to the blueprint. And what we can do is we can 
apply a width option to every field that we create. And we can define a width with such fractions. So one half, one quarter, three quarter, etc. So let's just use one half for all the fields that we've created. And let's see how that looks like in a panel. Reload it. And now you can see, oh yeah, we put it into a grid. And this actually looks so much better already, right? So we have um, a lot easier way to scan those fields and um, it fits the content better. It's, it's overall a really good improvement to, to this layout. So with widths of fields and putting stuff into grids, you can do a lot of, of things to enhance those forms and make it a little less boring and more um, yeah, teasing to, to enter content there. But it doesn't really stop there. So right now we um, haven't set up a label yet and I want to explain you how that works. So you see um, all the field labels are there actually. So we have a text label, we have a year label, client label, category label, but we haven't specified a label option. And Kirby takes the name of the field if there is no label option and uses that as the label option, tries to make the best out of it. But of course, oftentimes you probably want to have more control over the label and set it for yourself and be a bit more descriptive. Um, let's just use the text field here and create a label for it. And for example, call it project description. So it doesn't have to match the name of the field. So now we have a custom label for our text area and that already looks a lot better. But we can give even more information around our fields to help our editors fill in stuff. And one other important option that you might want to use quite often is the help option. So we can now add help text to fields and give helpful information. Um, maybe it could be something about the style of um, how text should be written, or it could be something that you have to be aware of when you enter content there. Um, let's put, just put it like this see our content style guide. Um, and you can even put markdown in there. So you could even put a link into the help text to your style guide. And then your editors can just click on the link and go to the style guide directly and see what they should follow in order to fill in this field correctly. So help text is super useful. I mean, Putting as much work into the inline documentation as possible is a very good way of guaranteeing that your editors are confident with what they're doing in here and that they don't have to call you up um, all the time because they have questions around those simple things like how you fill in the stuff here. So it's really, really good to, to spend time on this. Another thing that we can do to make the fields more descriptive and explain um, a bit more about what you should enter is um, the so-called before and after options. So we can use this for our year field, for example, define a for before option. And let's just use finished here. You can see this will put the text before the input. Um, as I said, there's another option called after, which you can use to put it after the input, so it would appear here then. And it's, again, another great way in combination with the label and with the help text um, to give more information instantly. Um, for example, for the year here, you want to say, okay, this is not the year in which we started the project, but in which we finished the project, so you don't have to explain that. It's just instantly visible here. So that's a very good part that you can, uh, very good thing that you can do. Um, let's just pretend for a second that this would be a price field to give you a bit more of an example how you can use this together. So let's say this is this would be the budget, for example. Let's call this budget for a second. Um, and then we could say before would be budget or total and after would be just a dollar sign. So you could instantly turn this into a um, quite nice looking price field. You could turn this around depending on how you like to format your um, numbers, but you get, you, get, you get the idea. Okay, let's convert this back to year fields. 
And let me show you a couple more things. One more thing to customize a field is to use our icon option. And again, all the options that I'm showing you here are mostly options that are available for all the fields. There are a few exceptions here and there, but in general, those, those options that I'm showing in this video are available for every field. Um, so let's go to the client field here and use the icon option. And with the icon option, we can place an icon after the input. And we are going to use the user icon here. So now it placed the icon here. And um, to see a list of available icons, you can go to our website, to the reference. Let me go back. So if you go to docs, to reference, and then here on the left, you see the panel section and the icon section. And then you can see all the available icons that you can place here. Just use the, the icon name, and then you can place it there. In the reference, you will also see a list of all the fields that are available. So, so far we only touched um, the text area and the text field and the URL field and the number field, but there are many more and every field has its own set of options. So you can see all the fields here in an example, how they can be used. So we have checkboxes, we have radio boxes and range sliders and date fields and um, tables and text, text inputs. And if you click on one of the fields, you get a list of all the available options here. And I really recommend to check them out, especially if you want to spend more time on customizing those, those fields. But let me show you a couple more things. So we only talked about uh, customization so far, but another important part is also um, validation. So, so make sure that the content that has been entered is already in a good shape before it gets published. If we go back, what we can do for pretty much every field is we can set it to required. So for example, if you have, if you remember again, we have this the definition list here and every item in the definition list is kind of optional, right? So it doesn't really have to be entered. So we don't have to make those fields required. They are basically optional. But for the text field, we saw that other project um, and the text looked like it looked really plain and, and kind of broken without the text. So let's make the text required with the required option. And if we reload that, you will see there's this little star here, asterisk. And if we remove the text, you get the red outline. So it is inst instantly being shown as there is a mistake here. And we can't save it anymore. So there's a validation error when we try to save the page. So this is a really good way to make sure that your content already, yeah, as I said, is in good shape. Um, and this can be taken further. So you can work with required fields. You can also work with um, additional validation rules. So for example, for the text area, we would have something like max length or min length. Um, in order to make sure that the text block doesn't get too long or isn't the text isn't too short to, to fit into your layout and to, into your design. And for the year fields, there are um, different validation rules in this case because it's a number, it's not a text. So what we can do here is we can say, okay, the, the agency has been founded in 2000. So there are definitely no projects before 2000, so it doesn't make sense to allow years below 2000 here. And this would be another way um, to, to ensure that the quality is right of your content. Let me show a few more things. So when you design forms like this, it's super important to think about what is going to be entered. As I said before, for the number field or for year, it makes sense to put that into a number field. For the URL, it makes sense to put that in a URL field because then you get instant URL validation out of the box. And for the category, we have a free form or free text field so far. And um, th this could work, but then whenever an editor comes to this project page and starts editing projects, they have to remember um, what kind of categories do we have. So they should probably always take the same ones. And so a text field doesn't make that much sense. So let's turn that quickly into a select field instead. And we predefine the options that are available. So we use our product design 
Maybe we have editorial and then we have photography as another one. And by doing this, we can now predefine the options that are available, reload that, and now you, it's much easier to choose. Um, the editor always chooses the right thing. There's no, um, there are no different kinds of writing uh, the, the categories. It's all, it's all super easy to enter. So that's one important part. Choose the right field type for the right kind of content. Let me just show you a few more. So one thing we could do here is to add a text field. Use tags. Just as an example of another field type. And together with the category, it might make sense to say, okay, um, we put another few tags in here. So we have something like water, and milk, and uh, lemons. I have no idea. So just a free um, way to enter those tags. Um, that get auto-completed um, when you enter more of those stuff. So a really useful field for such kind of cases. And as I showed you in our documentation, you, we have a lot of those default fields and you can get really far with those, especially if you explore all the options. But there might be cases where you say, okay, I have a very special requirement for this particular project um, and then I don't really find the, the the matching field for what I want to achieve. So there are two options in that case. Um, one option is to build your own plugin for such a field. So we have a field plugin API that you can use um, in order to create your own fields. So they could connect with some kind of database or um, yeah, do whatever you feel needs to be done in your project. And the other way that you could, could do it is go to our website again to our plugins. And we have a lot of um, cool field plugins in there already from third-party developers, such as the locator plugin in this case. So you can download it from here, and I already did that. Let me open my finder. So I already um, downloaded lo the locator plugin, and I want to show you how to install that in just a matter of a few minutes. So um, I unzipped it and uh, now I copied it. I'm going to my site folder. Normally there should be a plugins folder already in the plain kit, it's not there, so you can just create it and then paste the locator plugin in there. And now we have a new field type called locator in our panel and we can instantly install it by going for the locator type here. So normally this wouldn't be available. It's not, it's not one of our default fields, but we can now use it after we installed it. And where's my panel? Here's my panel. If I reload that again, we have now a beautiful way to set the location for um, the project. So we could say, okay, this has been, this is in Berlin, for example. So the location plugin is a really, really cool plugin um, that you can use to drag this around and say, okay, this is where the project lives, or like you can enter an address here. Um, and then it's just a very intuitive way of entering this. And then you can save it. And now you have a, a location stored together with the projects. So you can see, even if you reach that point that the custom or the, the all the default fields that we offer are not enough, you are still not lost. You can either write your own or you can install one of the plugins. So this has been an overview of what you can do with forms, how you can customize them, how you can put stuff into grids and put little icons next to them and labels and inline help. And there's so much more you can do with them um, for further videos. So we are going to dive, we're going to uh, have a closer look at individual fields, the more complex ones that you might want to check out. But so far, go to our website, check out the documentation. We have everything in there already and just have fun with those kind of setups. I, I really enjoy doing this and getting the most out of it. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye-bye.